Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, because you are a God that cannot fail. And as we come tonight, O oh Lord, I pray, you will turn every life around in Jesus' name. Impart faith to every heart. Impart life to everyone. And the spirit that works mightily will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, verse 23, verse 24. Mark 11, 22. And Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. And Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. Something had happened before this time. The Lord Jesus Christ with his 12 disciples, they were walking on the way. And Jesus saw a fig tree. That fig tree was supposed to bring forth fruit. But there was no fruit there. And so Jesus spoke the word. He didn't cut the tree with an axe. He didn't shake the tree with a sand. He didn't touch the tree in any way. He stood at a distance. Like I'm standing at a distance before you today. I'm not there to touch you. I'm not there to shake you. But Jesus at a distance said, No man eat fruit on that tree anymore. He said it plainly. He said it quietly. He said it without jumping, without running, without shouting. He said it in his normal voice. But there was faith behind those words. And the disciples looked at the tree as if nothing had taken place. They passed on. The following morning, they were passing by. And they saw the tree. The tree had dried up. Like your sickness is going to dry up. Like that cancer in your body is going to dry up. That infirmity in your body is going to dry up. When they saw the tree dried up, then they said, Lord, see the tree that you spoke about yesterday that is dried is withered away it was on the basis of that that jesus answering said unto them have faith in god in verse 23 for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say he now transferred it unto them and he said, Whosoever any of you, my disciples, will say like I said, will speak like I spoke, will pronounce the word like I pronounced the word, whosoever, maybe Peter or Andrew, whosoever, maybe Jacob or Joseph, whosoever, Maybe Matthew or Bartholomew, whosoever he was saying, their height, their strength, their age did not matter. It was the faith in them that actually mattered. And he said, Whosoever, and you know, Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away, which means. He's still saying the same thing today. And you are the whosoever I'm talking about tonight. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. I shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe 
that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, therefore, because of what happened to the tree, therefore, I say unto you, because there may be a tree in your life that is sapping away your energy, sapping away your resources, taking away your money, and it's not bearing any fruit. I spoke to that purposeless, fruitless tree. Therefore, in the same way, I say unto you, that sickness that is taking money from you is not contributing anything to you. That demonic oppression that is taking away your energy, your attention, your life, is not adding anything unto you. That poverty, that need, that is taking all your thoughts, all your mind away, not adding anything to you. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, everything you desire, something good is coming your way. Everything you desire, the positive thing is coming your way. He said, whatsoever you desire when ye pray believe that ye receive and ye shall have them ye shall have them your miracle is not only one tonight because jesus says you have them in the plural they are coming your way in jesus name i'm talking to you tonight on the power of faith in god the power of faith in God. As we look at what the Lord said, when he said, have faith in God. And then he said, whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, we come here tonight. All I'm interested in tonight is that any mountain in your life hindering that life productive purpose of God in your life any mountain there's a bulldozer tonight is going to whisk everything away in Jesus name that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed is going to be removed sicknesses removed cancer removed ulcer removed Tuberculosis removed. Paralysis removed. That brain insanity removed in Jesus' name. And be cast into the sea. I shall not doubt in his heart. He shall have, he shall have, I will have whatever I say. You'll have it in Jesus' name. Three points. Number one, the promise of the word of faith. The promise of the word of faith. The promise of the word of faith. Number two, the power of the work of faith. The work of faith. The activity of faith. The manifestation of faith. The ability of faith. The power of the work of faith. Number three, the progress through the work of faith. Work that is the movement of faith. The steps of faith. We're making progress. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Making progress. The progress through the work of faith. Number one. Number one. The promise of the word of faith. Word of faith. Word of faith. Remember? Word of faith. Look at Romans chapter 10 verse 8. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what says it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith. You see the problem with other people, many people, is that instead of the word of faith, they have the word of unbelief, the words they pronounce. But I want to tell you tonight, miracles come through the promise of the word of faith. Therefore, the number one thing to strike out is the word of unbelief. 
even if it's coming in your mind that maybe this will not happen that will not happen do not give expression to the word of what believe stab it it's like when you have an animal there because unbelief is a beast it's an animal if you don't feed it if you don't give it any food any attention eventually you'll stab it to death do not give expression to the word of unbelief word of faith number two word of uncertainty there are many people instead of the word of faith i'm not sure i don't know whether it will happen or not me i know something good is going to happen tonight i know miracles are going to happen tonight i know blind eyes if you are there those blind eyes will open tonight in jesus name cut it off cut it off words of uncertainty words of uncertainty because it is the promise of the word of faith number three cut it off words of unfaithfulness unfaithfulness it's an insult to say that god is unfaithful it's blasphemy to say that god is unfaithful for god to say here is what i will do and then for you to say maybe god will not be faithful words of unfaithfulness cut it off because the faithfulness of god reaches from us unto heaven tonight the promise of God will be yes and amen your life in Jesus' name. Number four, words of unrighteousness. Words of unrighteousness. The word of God tells us, God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. God is not unrighteous to forget your passion towards sin. And you're running after him. And you're wanting to be what he wants you to be. Cut it off words of unrighteousness cut it off number five words of unworthiness christ said already whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed the area of unworthiness doesn't come into this at all the thought of unworthiness does not come to this at all already he puts your name there he says you are the whosoever he didn't put, uh, you know, a tall person, a short person, a man or a woman. It's good for the man. It's good for the woman. It's good for the teenager. It's good for the parents. Because it's whosoever cut it off any thought of unworthiness. Christ has made you worthy. You are worthy in Jesus' name. Say, I am worthy. Say, I am worthy. I am worthy of the miracle part tonight. You are worthy in Jesus' name words of the unstable unstable he that doubteth in his heart is like something that has been put to and fro is unstable unstable in all his ways that is stability the words of the unstable today i say i believe the next moment i'm not sure again because we're talking about the word of faith the faith that is positive and powerful and the faith that i know that i know it must happen tonight it will happen in jesus name the words of the unknown cut it off you see those heathens in athens as paul the apostle passed through they said they was serving an unknown God. You are not coming to God tonight as if the Father to you is unknown. You are not coming to God tonight as if Jesus to you is unknown. You are not coming to God tonight as if the Holy Ghost is unknown. I don't know whether it will happen or it will not happen. I know. I said I know. I said I know anybody there that knows that tonight god will be faithful anybody there tonight that knows the name of jesus will walk mightily anybody there tonight that knows that heaven and earth may pass away the words of jesus will never pass away it is happening in your life tonight in jesus name 
the word, the word of faith, the word of faith. And it says, the promise of the word of faith. This is the word of faith. Look at that. Romans chapter 10, verse 8 again. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what says each? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth. And then it says in thine heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You see how long it takes people, some people to say they get saved, they say, I've been coming to this place for three years. I'm not saved yet. But he says, if you just believe in your heart and then confess with your mouth, how long does that take? Other people say, I'm trying. I'm struggling. I'm trying my best. It has taken me seven years now. I'm not saved yet. What? How long does it take? If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Jesus is Lord. And shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead on your behalf. Thou shalt be saved. Tonight, if you are not saved yet, you'll be saved in Jesus' name. It's the same thing about healing. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is the Lord over your body. And shall believe in your heart that the spirit that raised him up from the dead dwells in your mortal body. He will quicken your mortal body. And tonight, you are healed in Jesus' name. It's the same thing with deliverance. If thou shalt confess with your mouth that the Lordship of Jesus Christ, he has his Lord over the spirit realm, his Lord over demons and disease and everything. And then you'll confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, that the powers of demons could not hold him down, and that the powers of demons will not hold you down. You'll be delivered in Jesus' name. Then it says in verse 9, that he that shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Then it says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Some people say, I don't understand. This righteousness is tough. This righteousness is difficult because I try. It doesn't say by trial man gets unto righteousness other people say i'm struggling i'm struggling i'm trying to overcome this overcome that it doesn't say by struggling man comes into righteousness it says with the heart man believeth unto righteousness say what he said believe what he said that he said i'll make you righteous he'll make you righteous i said he'll make you righteous and then it says, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Unto salvation. All the promises of God from this night, there'll be yes in your life. There'll be amen in your life. Look at Acts chapter 2, I'm reading verse 39. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. For the promise is unto you. For the promise is unto you. I said the promise is unto you. Well... That's what is applicable to every promise of God. Is there any promise of salvation in the Bible? The promise is unto you. Is there any promise of sanctification in the Bible? The promise is unto you. Is there any promise of Holy Ghost power? Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power in the Bible. The promise is unto you tonight in Jesus' name. Is there any promise of healing in the Bible? The promise is unto you tonight. I said the promise is unto you tonight sickness i command you come out of their lives in jesus name is there any promise of deliverance any promise of freedom any promise of liberty in the bible the promise is unto you is there any promise of prosperity in the bible the promise is unto you is there any promise of long life in the bible the promise is unto you is there any promise of childbearing in the bible the promise is unto you Look at the promise of God. Look at the promise of God tonight. You are a partaker in Jesus' name. The promise of the word of faith. The promise of the word of faith. The word is given to us already. And it's the word of faith. And as 
God has spoken the word of faith unto you. And you repeat the word of faith back unto God. Those two will come together, will produce a miracle in your life in Jesus' name. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. How many promises will God fulfill? How many promises will God make true in your life? First Kings chapter 8, First Kings chapter 8, First Kings chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 56. Be getting ready because tonight you will be a particle of the miracle power. You'll be hearing testimonies. This person came, testimony, that person came, testimony. Praise the Lord, tonight is your night. Praise the Lord, tonight is your night. Because the promise is unto you. I said the promise is unto, the promise is unto any promise you are holding unto tonight. It is done in Jesus' name. First, first Kings, first Kings chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 56. First Kings chapter 8. We're looking at verse 56. Don't limit your God. There is no lack. There's no loss. There's no limitation. I said, don't limit your God. There's no lack. There's no loss. There's no limitation. I said, don't limit your God. There's no, there's no, and there's no. It will happen in Jesus' name. Chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 56, it says, Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised, according to all that he promised, according to all that he promised, there has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. There has not failed one word. That's why I said salvation is here tonight. Sanctification is here tonight. Holy Ghost is here tonight. Power is here tonight. That's why I'm saying healing is here tonight. Deliverance is here tonight. Miracle children are here tonight. Prosperity is here tonight. There has not failed one word of all his good promises which he promised unto us. You will get it in Jesus' name. Point number two now, point number two, the power of the work of faith. The power of the work of faith. The power of the work of faith. You see, there are some people that leave their faith dangling in the air. It has no foundation. It has no ground. It has no fruit. It has no action attached unto it. It must be the work of faith. The work of faith. Look at it. We're looking at James chapter 2. James chapter 2 verse 17. James chapter 2 verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead. Being alone. If that faith is just hanging there, I believe, I believe there's no action to show that you believe. When it says that you are healed, believe it and do what you are not able to do before. If you are blind before and it says the word of power, the word of faith is coming to you. What you do after the final amen, you open your eyes and know that you are going to see there must be a demonstration. There must be an activity. There must be something that you do to show that it's the work of faith. It will happen tonight. I said it will happen tonight. You are getting something in Jesus' name. But the work of faith, the work of faith. Look at it, verse 20, verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? It says it the second time again. Faith without action. Faith without any activity. Faith without corresponding action. That because I believe, that's why I'm doing this. Faith without action is dead. Look at verse 26. It says in verse 26, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So, it's a power that is manifested through the work of faith. The work of faith. 
As you believe tonight, it will be unto you according to your faith. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. When you say you believe, then there must be something you will do to demonstrate your belief. Look at Jesus Christ now. And look at what he told the people. They were looking for wine. They were searching for wine. Because the wine had finished. And then the mother said unto Jesus, The wine is finished. And Jesus said, What have I got to do with you, woman? She didn't get offended. She didn't get offended. If you have faith in God, it is what you are looking for. That is your focus. That is your target. There's no offense. Whatever Jesus said, he is the truth. He is the way, he is the life. It's always correct. And look at the other woman that Jesus said, it is not right to give the children's bread and to give to dogs. And she accepted. Faith is never offended. It is those who don't have faith, they're looking at the grammar. They're looking at the construction. They're looking at the presentation. They're looking at the structure. But when you have faith, you take the word at face value and the miracle will strike you right there in Jesus' name. And then Mary went to tell those servants, whatsoever he says unto you, do. Tell me, whatsoever he says unto you, I didn't hear you. Whatsoever I say unto you, do it. That's the work of faith. That's the action of faith. What he says may look unreasonable. I had an accident. I'm on crutches. And the Lord is saying, healing is coming your way right now. Drop those crutches and stand up. Whatsoever I say unto you, do it. You brought somebody deaf and dumb. Has not been speaking. And the Lord is speaking right now that is the God of all power. And he's going to open those deaf ears. He's going to lose those tongues. Speak unto them right now. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. It will happen in Jesus' name. You've been to a particular place for interview. And then you didn't get any results. I was saying, go back there. Your job is waiting for you. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. You're going to get the job in Jesus' name. You went for a medical report before and they said everything is this, everything is that. And they say you are dying and then the Lord is saying you will not die, you will live. I say you will not die, you will live. And the Lord is saying go back to that same place, let them conduct another test. They will see that you are totally healed forever in Jesus' name. That, that's, the word, that's the word of faith. So uh, Jesus said fill the water pots with water. Ah, we're looking for wine whatsoever he says unto you do it that's the work of faith and then they filled it with water and then jesus said draw it out now remember whatsoever he says unto you do it that's the work of faith and he drew it up go and give to the master of ceremony and he gave to the man he drank it he said this is the best wine i ever tasted in my life and i'm saying this is the best miracle you'll ever get in your life Tonight, the best miracle. Tonight, the best healing. Tonight, the best deliverance. And tonight, the best signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Look at this. Look at this. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9. We're looking at verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that believeth. How many things are possible tonight? I said how many things are possible tonight? Now, in your own personal life, in your own personal life, in your own personal life, how many things are possible? All those things, I cannot go there, you can go there. I cannot do this, you can do it. I cannot climb this mountain, you can climb that mountain. I cannot live in this family, you will live in that family. I cannot do this work, you will do that work. This is impossible. Impossibilities are turned to possibilities tonight in Jesus' name. All things. All things. All things. Those who are not saved in your family, can they get saved? They'll be saved. And those who are not healed, who are sick, can they get healed? There's going to be double healing today in Jesus' name. Number one, healing for you right there in front of me. Healing for the people that are hearing right now in Jesus' name. But 
we're going to multiply that healing by two. You will take the name of somebody in the hospital, somebody among your neighborhood that you know they have been sick for a long time. And while we're here, you will get your and say, that's number one. And then the person out there who is not here tonight, you're going to mention them. By the time you get back home, number two, healing is theirs also in Jesus' name. Because there is a path for healing here tonight. Power for deliverance here tonight. Because by this same faith, deliverance will come in Jesus' name. Any power of demons, any power of evil spirit, everything will be broken down tonight in Jesus' name. Do you know that there are people here tonight, you are going to be sanctified. You are going to be made holy. I found it impossible to internal holiness and by transparent holiness. I found this impossible by faith tonight. Receive in Jesus' name. There are people there you have been saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost baptism. Holy Ghost power. Power, power, power tonight. Power tonight. Holy Ghost power tonight with the manifestation that we find in the Acts of the Apostles, everything will come upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Miracles, miracles, miracles. I see miracle everywhere. I said I see miracle everywhere. I see miracle everywhere. That pain is gone in Jesus' name. That heart that has a hole there is mended right now in Jesus' name. I walk a little distance, I walk a little distance, I'm breathing as if I run, relay, raise, all that weakness of your heart, everything is going to be strengthened tonight, in Jesus' name. All possibilities, all possibilities in your life, impossibility is cancelled. All that language, I cannot, I will not, I must not, you cancel it from tonight because today you are a child of faith. Today you are a man of faith. And today you're a woman of faith in Jesus' name. I'm a woman, I cannot do that. Who said so? Jesus said, whosoever. I'm just a newcomer, I cannot do that. Jesus said, whosoever, whatsoever as you believe, it will be to you tonight in Jesus' name. Look at this in Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. And I'm reading here from verse 20. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, unbelief is cancelled in my life. Unbelief is cancelled in my life. Unbelief is cancelled in my life. Say it for yourself. Unbelief is cancelled in my life. Anywhere I go, faith, no unbelief. Faith, no unbelief. Faith, no unbelief. At the time of prayer, no unbelief. I said there's no unbelief. In your family, no unbelief in Jesus' name. In your place of work, no unbelief in Jesus' name. In the day, in the night, in the dream, in reality, there will be no unbelief in Jesus' name. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for very lay I say unto you, the Lord is talking to me. I said the Lord is talking to me. I said the Lord is talking to me. If ye have faith, if ye have faith, if ye have faith, as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible unto you i'm asking you a question right now if you really believe that if you really believe that that in this project of life in this project of family development in this project of educational pursuit in this project of business that you know that nothing shall be possible unto you what will you begin to plan from tonight? How will you begin to lay from tonight? Where will you go from tonight? If you believe that this problem were presented to the Lord tonight, that all the barrenness, all the sterility, everything will clear everything out of the way. If you believe a miracle child is coming on the way, what will you do tonight? How will you act tonight? What preparation will you make? And Jesus said, nothing, nothing, nothing shall be impossible unto you. You need to now know that by the grace of God, you are a success, you are not a failure. 
you are happy and you are not sad anymore. You need to know that circumstances will not dictate, will not determine the direction of your life. It is your faith inside you that will determine the progress of your life in Jesus' name. And thank God you will make it. I said thank God you will make it by the work of faith, by the action of faith, by the activity of faith. Nothing shall be impossible unto you in Jesus' name. Point number three, now progress through the work of faith. Progress through the work of faith. Do you know you are going to make progress in your life? I said, do you know you are going to make progress in your life? All the setbacks of your life, they are cut off in Jesus' name. Falling and rising, falling and rising. I try to catch it. I get one, I lose three. I get one, I lose five. All that loss is cut off in Jesus' name. You will march forward. You will march forward. You have come out of Egypt and you are going to Canaan land. You will make progress and get to that Canaan land in Jesus' name. You will not go back to Egypt again. Egypt of failure forever cancelled. Egypt of defeat forever cancelled. Egypt of sickness forever cancelled. Egypt of depression forever cancelled. Egypt of madness, insanity forever cancelled. Egypt of hatred and enmity forever cancelled. Egypt of uh, no food, no nothing, whatever forever cancelled in Jesus' name. Egypt of barrenness forever cancelled in Jesus' name. Egypt of Depending upon one man somewhere, idolatry, forever cancelled in Jesus' name. Progress, 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 marching forward, forward, ever, backward, never. Upward, ever, downward, never. Forward, ever, no backsliding in Jesus' name. Progress, progress, progress through the work of faith. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 for we walk by faith and not by sight for we walk by faith and not by sight what does that mean for we walk by faith and not by sight look up here what it means is this when i open my eyes and i'm walking who do i see you might see pharaoh when you open your eyes and you are walking who do you see you might see nebuchadnezzar when you open your eyes and you are walking, you might see the fire of Nebuchadnezzar and then that strikes fear in your heart because of what you see. But it says, we're not walking by sight. We're walking by faith. What does that mean? I close my eyes. I don't see Pharaoh, but I see my God. I close my eyes. I don't see Nebuchadnezzar, but I see the fourth one that came in the fire. But I see the appearance of the fourth one is like the Son of God. The Son is with you. He will never leave you. Underneath you are the everlasting arms, and the everlasting arms will carry you in Jesus' name. And then he says, I give the Holy Ghost unto you. He will abide with you forever. When you close your eyes on your praying, you don't see Pharaoh. You don't see Nebuchadnezzar, you don't see Herod, you see the almighty God on the throne will never fail. You see Jesus Christ who said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. You are walking by faith. You are walking by the word of Jesus, walking by faith. You are walking by the pronouncement of Jesus in your life. You are walking by faith. And because you are walking by faith, all things are possible in your life. In Jesus' name. Those who are walking by faith, how do they walk? Number one, they walk in humility. They walk in humility. They say, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. They said, this is not my power, and this is not my might, but God is going to do definitely, going to do great things, mighty things in my life. Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 8. Walk in humility. It says, he has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk, tell me, and to walk, tell me, to walk humbly with thy God. You're saying, I can do all things, if you stop there, that's pride, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. My strength is in Christ. 
my achievement is in Christ. My progress is in Christ. Everything he promised, he is a faithful one. He will do it in my life. That's you are walking in humility. Number two, you are walking in honesty. Walking in honesty. You don't need to be dishonest because everything the Lord has ordained for you to have, you will have in Jesus' name. You know, if you know that your possession is going to be your possession and your inheritance is going to be your inheritance, there's no dishonesty necessary. The people who try to be dishonest, why are they dishonest? Because they think, I can't have it straightforward. I can't have it in the normal way. Therefore, they have to do some juggling or whatever. But you don't have to do that because it is coming your way. I said it's coming your way. No Pharaoh can hinder your blessing tonight. No Herod can hinder your blessing tonight. No demon can hinder your blessing any time in your life. And since you know it is coming, it is coming, and it will get to you, Therefore, there's no need for dishonesty. Look at Romans, Romans, Romans chapter 13. In Romans chapter 13, I'm reading here in verse 13, 13, 13, 13, 13 of Romans. And here is what the Lord is telling us here. The way we walk, he says, let us walk honestly as in the day. Let us walk honestly as in the day. That means, number one, because we are walking by faith. And you are walking by faith, you are making progress, number one. You walk in humility. Number two, you walk in uh, honesty. Number three, you walk in holiness. You walk in holiness. I'm looking at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, we're looking at verse 6. Even though it appears that you are past the age of childbearing, if you still want a child, miracle child will come in Jesus' name. Husband is old and wife is old, and you're saying, Oh Lord, when it will be my turn, when it is it my turn, tonight it is your turn in Jesus' name. Look at this, look at this. In Luke chapter 1, verse 6, Luke chapter 1, verse 6, it says, And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments, in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless walking in holiness. You see, the people whose hearts are centered in God, that they just know that I'm looking up to the hills from whence my help will come. I'm looking up to the hills from whence all my resources and all my prosperity and everything I ever need, everything will come. They are walking in humility. They are walking in honesty. They are walking in holiness. They are walking in health. They are walking in health. You'll be healthy in Jesus' name. Every form of sickness, every form of infirmity, every form of affliction is taking away your life in Jesus' name. Walk by faith, there'll be humility. Walk by faith, there'll be honesty. Walk by faith, there'll be holiness. Walk by faith, there'll be healing and health in your body. It will happen in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. The word of the Lord is coming to you right now. And your body will receive strength and power and health and vigor in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Then Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, tell me. Tell your neighbor. Look to the other side and tell them. Don't allow anything, all the paralysis that kept you there, all the infirmity that kept you there since you were born, all those impossibilities, I'm tied down here, I'm hindered here, I'm limited. The doctor said, and they said, and they said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. That's what you do to, you know, those who are still wondering, can I rise? Can I walk? And there are your neighbors there by the grace of God, you know, share your faith together. Hold them like this and say, my brother, it has happened. Put action to your faith. Put action to your faith. It's the work of faith. And then as we lift them up, they're going to walk in Jesus' name. He lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he leaping stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God walking in hell number five walk like him walk like him that is, if you're going to make progress, you're making progress by walking the walk of faith. That is, the movement of faith, the steps of faith. It's like you're walking like him. First John chapter 2, verse 6. 
First John chapter 2 verse 6. It says, He that saith he abided in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Jesus never walked in unbelief, just walked like him. Everything he did, he did by faith. Jesus never walked in dishonesty. Just walk like him. Just be honest. Jesus never walked it tied to the devil, afraid of the devil, afraid of demons, afraid of people. He walked in boldness and conscious and dependence upon the Almighty God. And it says, He that abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Anything that happens to you, anything you ask, is that what will Jesus do? What will Jesus say? How will Jesus act? How will Jesus dress? How will Jesus eat? How will Jesus pray? How will Jesus trust? How will Jesus love? How will Jesus forgive? How will Jesus interact? How will Jesus behave? Anyone that says he abideth in him ought to walk even as he walk. You walk like him. Then you walk to higher grounds. Everybody say higher grounds. I said, say higher grounds. You will not remain at this level where you are. You are going to go higher. I said you are going to go higher. No river Jordan will hinder your progress. No Red Sea will hinder your progress. No enemy will hinder your progress. Higher ground, higher ground, higher ground will be yours in Jesus' name. You have been blessed. You will be blessed more and more. You have been healed, you'll be healed more and more. You have been delivered, you'll be delivered more and more. Higher ground will be yours in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading from verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. There is no fainting person here tonight. Power is coming your way in Jesus' name. Nothing that is making you be as if you are going to faint, you are going to pass on, you are going to pass up. Life coming to you right now in Jesus' name. And strength and vitality and power in your system right now. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, I praise God for you are here tonight. Uh, you see, I'm getting something. You are getting something. I said you are getting something. He says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. You will soar like an eagle in Jesus' name. You will walk to higher grounds in Jesus' name. They shall run, they shall not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. In fact, in fact, number one, when you walk by faith, you walk in humility. Number two, you walk in honesty. Number three, you walk in holiness. Number four, you walk in health. Number five, you walk like him. Number six, you walk to higher grounds, higher grounds, higher grounds. Who are the people I'm talking about? Higher grounds in Jesus' name. Number seven, you walk into heaven. I said you walk into heaven. The gates of hell are closed concerning you in Jesus' name. Heaven is your final destination. You will not stop your journey halfway. Heaven is the place you are going to live forever. There's a mansion waiting for you in heaven. The streets of gold in heaven, you are going to walk there. You'll see Abraham, you'll see Isaac, you'll see Jacob. You will see Jesus Christ. You will see the throne of God. You will see Stephen. You will see Paul. You will see Peter. All the saints of God that have gone. You'll be one of the saints. When the saints go marching in, you are there. When the saints go marching in, you are there. I said when the saints go marching in, you are there in Jesus' name. The devil that will, the devil that will try to pull you down, pull you to hell, I cut off his hand from you in Jesus' name. All those persecutions, all those temptations that will try to pull you down, you will not go down. 
you will not go down. Higher, 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 higher every day in Jesus' name until you will walk straight into heaven. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 22. Genesis chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 22. It says, And Enoch walked with God, after he begat me to sell her 300 years, and begat sons and daughters, and all the days of Enoch were 165 years, and Enoch walked with God. God and it was not for God took him. For God, where did he take him to? Where is he taking you to? In a few years, when Jesus comes for the saints, where will he take you to? In my father's house are many mansions. If it wants, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again so that I will receive you unto myself. So that where I am, there ye may be also. You'll be there in Jesus' name. You see everything you need on earth, everything you need in heaven, everything you need personally, everything you need in the family, everything you need in the spiritual life, everything you need in material life, everything you need for your soul, everything you need for your body, everything you need for the walk of your own, everything you need to walk in progress by faith, you get it tonight in Jesus' name. I'm coming back now to Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Here is what the Lord is telling you right now. And Jesus answering says unto them, have faith in God. Have faith. In, anybody there have faith in God? Anybody there having faith in God? Tonight, you are the child of miracle. Tonight, you are the candidate of miracle. Have faith in God. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Your mountains will move tonight. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe. When ye pray, believe. When you pray, it doesn't say when you pray, cry. It doesn't say when you pray, doubt. It doesn't say when you pray, shout. But when you pray, do some gymnastics. When you pray, run up and down. When you pray, when you pray, believe. As you believe tonight that you receive, you shall have it. You shall have them. You shall have them. Anybody receiving miracle tonight? Where are they? And they're sitting down, standing on the promises I cannot fail. Standing on the promises, you cannot fall. The promises are yes and amen tonight in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and tell the Lord is right there. Miracle is right there. Salvation is right there. Sanctification is right there. The power of the Holy Ghost is right there. Healing is right there. Deliverance is right there. Your miracle child is right there. Your job is right there. Anything you need, anything you, anything you need is right there. It's right there. The walk of the word of faith. And the work of faith, and the work of faith, you are making progress, you are making progress. You will not remain at that same static situation. You will not remain in that same place. Miracle, miracle, miracle upon your life tonight. Blind eyes are opening. Miracle tonight. Lame, they are rising up and walking. Miracle. Those who are sick, they are getting healed. Tonight. Miracle, miracle. Every desire of your heart, every desire of your heart, every desire of your heart is being done right now. It's being done right now. The Lord is sending the miracle over there, over there, over there. Miracles coming there right now. Miracles coming there right now. Receive yours receive yours receive yours you have a testimony tonight you have a testimony tonight just mention it and it's done just mention it and it's done just mention it and it's done in jesus name we pray and the people of god said are you ready are you ready i said are you ready you raise up one hand, you lay the other hand on the Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you tonight because this is a new season of power. It's a new period of power. Send forth your power on everyone in Jesus' name. 
I pray that those who have asked for salvation, forgiveness of their sin, I pray right now that salvation will come to them in Jesus' name. For those who ask him for that higher, that greater, that deeper experience of holiness and sanctification, sanctify them. Purify them. And Lord, I pray the blood of Jesus will wash them whiter than snow in Jesus' name. And for those saved, sanctified souls who are asking for the power of the Holy Ghost, immersion in the Holy Ghost, baptism in the Holy Ghost, I pray that the power of the Spirit will come upon them right now. And Lord, all the weakness of the past, I pray you blow it away from their lives in Jesus' name. Those who need healing, oh Lord, I pray, healing everywhere tonight. Healing everywhere tonight. Touch every sick person, heal them in Jesus' name. That cancer, I command you, dry up in Jesus' name. The tuberculosis, all these things related to tuberculosis in your life, TB, I command you be healed in Jesus' name. The one that is coughing blood and pouring out blood, I command that right now, all that coughing of blood will stop right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking for those that have high blood pressure, diabetes, and other things, those internal sicknesses, touch them immediately. Touch them immediately. And I pray instantaneous healing, instantaneous deliverance. Come to you right now in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are blind. You spirit of blindness, I command you, come out of that. Come out of that place in Jesus' name. I command all the glaucoma and all the whatever is uh, making you to be blind, I command, be removed in Jesus' name. I'm asking Lord for that person that has stiffness in the neck, I command that the pain and the stiffness in the neck, everything vanish away right now. And all the pains and the back waist pain, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Arthritis, I command you, all the pain of arthritis and the stiffness of arthritis, I command everything will vanish away right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. The pile over there and also the blood issue of blood, I pray right now, that issue of blood dry up immediately. And the pile, be healed in Jesus' name. Stroke and paralysis, I come against you. The power of the Lord is here tonight. I pray, stretch out that leg and be whole in Jesus' name. Stretch out that hand and be whole in Jesus' name. And all the paralysis, all the lameness, receive the word and the miracle of God in your body now in Jesus' name. All those who are deaf and dumb, I pray that sound will burst into your ears. And then your vocal cords will be loose, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now, whatever miracle people are asking you, anywhere, my right, my left, my center, at the back, miracle everywhere. Signs and wonders everywhere. Lord, at the final, amen, I pray you drop the miracle, the signs, the wonders, the healing, the deliverance in everyone's life in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. That's the final amen. The miracle is there right now. That's the final amen. The miracle is there right now. Check up yourself. Check up yourself. And then as you see the miracle has taking place, just give a shout of praise the Lord there. And we're rejoicing with you here. Praise the Lord. My name is Festus Oriahi. And beside me is my daughter. We had a very spectacular experience that I've come to share with you tonight. My daughter had an attack that was seen as mental attack that led to mental disorder. When it started, she speaks with herself. At the time, this thing started seven years ago. We were on it for a very long time. It became very, very violent. As I speak with you, I went through so many things. 
I went to, I will not lie to you because I cannot be here and begin to lie. I went to, I even sought for the best of Babalawo. I did after, I know they couldn't solve my problem. I took her, I went to so many churches. She was a little bit okay, but when she left there, the whole thing came over again after a few days. This year, I met with uh, Pastor Akekwande. And when I met with uh, Pastor Akekwande, he saw my daughter. My daughter would just sit down inside the mud. Sometimes inside gutter. Sometimes she will move out to, to 12 in the night. She will hit the doors and will be forced to leave her. She will move out. People will bring her in. At a point, it went out of hand. We were like, we wanted to just leave her, let her just, maybe anything that happens is okay. At the point, people said, still look at try. Maybe something good will still happen. But when we met with Pastor Akekwande, he said, he said, man, what is happening? Why is this young lady like this? I said, it's my daughter. And that, uh, that's how it has been for so many years. He said, no. I invite you to a program. You will have a breakthrough and uh, everything will end. <laughs> At this time, he was talking about my daughter, anytime she meets, he will see me and beat me up. Seriously. The mother, his junior ones, we cannot leave his junior ones to stay with her at home. There was a time if we went straight to my landlord and told my landlord that they should give us quick notice. And my landlord said, where will you stay? He said, well, <laughs> I will stay anywhere, but let my father and my mother go out and suffer. <laughs> and the landlord just looked at her and said, okay, I will do that later. Eventually, we now came to worship here. Well, I saw it as any other one because uh, I have gone through so many things, so many churches. When I came here, I was like, they said I should come early so that I will see everything as this happening. That I will be, he said, well, what you are going to experience is not uh, somebody speaking big grammar on the pulpit. He said, you are going to experience an environment that is saturated with the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, in that encounter, in that encounter, he told me that uh, he, I am speaking in his words. Because he's a man of the academia. He told me, he said, he's a realist. He said, when the spirit of God will meet with this demon that is in her, he said, it will have no option other than to flee from her. And we'll never locate her anymore. And where we were here, the longer short of it was that when we came here, we just like this prayer session, we rose up, we prayed, we sang songs and all that. There was no laying of hand as I saw in other churches for somebody to fall down and all that. There was nothing like that here. After all the prayers, I said, Pastor, we are through. The following day, we now left to go back home. I said, Pastor, no, not to say, yeah, you can go. That is it. It's okay. And we started going home. And uh, the most spectacular thing of it is that this violence that was extremely exceptional as we, as we went home she started relating with us well praise the lord I, I after seven years of re-torment that I went through in fact three days before we came here I was coming from the office I had chains in my hand. And when my daughter saw me, she said, Daddy, what is that that you are holding in your hand? I said, a bigger chain. He said, to chain me? I said, yes. I said, the smaller one with you now can no longer hold you. And uh, I have bought a bigger chain and a bigger padlock so that you cannot remove it when I chain you. She said, okay. And really, I had, there was a day at, at uh, Abacho, it took seven men to put him inside the bus to bring him back. It was very, very violent. But all this whole thing vanished that night. Praise the As Lord. I'm here today, I cannot, if I had to lie, I cannot lie in this forum. In this very forum, I cannot mock God. 
it happened since then. We stayed so long since May because we were looking at it as if maybe it might come back again. But as I speak with you, she could relate to her and she can say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord! Thank you so much. The you Lord, can, you can see the God, I did it for clear. me. We also do it for every Thank one of you. you. Thank you. God bless you. The Thank difference you so much. is clear. Put your hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to introduce myself. Philip Akwan. And I'm a Sean Branch. I come to share a testimony tonight about what God had done in my life. I went on a business trip almost to have a breakthrough. The devil struck. I traveled to you with uh, brother Tim Timothy. Timothy. So, in the morning I got up from bed, but I could not stand on my feet. I had problem waking up. So, I reached out to a chair to have support but the chair was moving away from me. I find myself fighting an unseen enemy, an evil force. I find myself hit on the door. I tried to hold the door, it hit me on the wall. But thank God, I was charging my phone near the wall. So I held the phone, and then make phone call, uh, send text message from my local pastor, Pastor McIntyre, and he texts me back with prayers. At the right time, Tim Timothy came in. So there was this encounter for 30 minutes between 5 o'clock to 5.30. And Timothy came in and they prayed for me. So there was like a ceasefire. And there was quiet and I was left alone. But I was in a coma after that. I was paralyzed. Then a few days afterwards was a retreat at uh, Uyo, the retreat that took place here, I joined it on satellite. Then the man of God declared that somebody was there with a urine problem. And he declared a healing on that person, so I claim it. At that point, I was not able to walk or talk or stand. So when I claim the feeling, I'm now able to walk. My legs are good. My strength is hand. That is good circulation. So that is why I come to give this statement. Because if I don't, since I know nobody was urinating in, in this headquarter church, so I claim that was me because I was all messed up just because I could not walk. So I thank God for those who introduced me to deeper life. The Spirit of God is here. And by Praise the affirmation, the I got killed. So Praise I thank God. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Our God is a wonderful God. Praise God. Praise Jesus. It was uh, about eight years ago. I got um, an Okada. Okada run into my leg. And I break my leg. I had a POP for about nine months. Then I started work. Later, when, this, uh, when the problem comes to me, I will start uh, having back pain. And the leg, sometimes when I enter dish, the, 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 I will know that this leg is shorter than this leg. Even the doctor told me that the leg is shorter than this leg. My daughter's uh, friend was pursuing me. I said, okay, I will come. But today, I made it. I said, I will come. Because I've been to Ayobo uh, uh, before. That was about 10 years ago. But today, I came here. And when a man of God, after praying, he was saying about the leg, that one of the leg is shorter than one. And because of it, I, I was having back pain, serious back pain. But now, I am stretching. Even when my, my daughter, they, they, they used to rub 
uh, something in my bag, rob and other things. I this my bag. Even today, they rob it before I left. And it will give me cold. But now, I'm not feeling cold again. No pains, no trouble again. Praise God! Eba Mike, hallelujah! Mo wa lati ijo ekun Yoruba ti Oshodi ni Shogunle mo gbe oruko Oluwaga ni Oshu to koja nigbati o ku ojo meta ka wa si bibai ara omo mi yi ti mo gbe pe ara e oja do ko si nkan kan to se sugbon oruko nigbati o je wi pe ko je ka sun mo wa gbe lo si hospital ti gbagada Nigba ti a debe, wani ka lo ya wo ran ya e. Nigba ti a ya wo ran yi tan, wani isho lo wwa ni nwe. Mo ki gbe wikbe isho, shugba e mi olonu sofu mi wikbe, olonu wan be la ye. Oto i bakan, mo wanan ti, onti baba wani no lu asa wikbe, ko si o fo, ko si a janu. Mo wadukbe lo wwa olonu, nigba ti a wawwa bi ilo joketa, what your daddy was see lasu to see ikeja one operation na she one fu wa ni appointment day we pe ni ojo monday we pe ojo yan na she operation mo ni mo fe je jesu fagile nigba tan tun ni ka wa ni ojo saturday mo so fun oko mi oko mi ni ah she mo mo we pe ni la nlo si eh dlcc mo lo to ni won ni kin je ka ma lo si waju olorun bi a se wa si bi yi niyan nigbati a bere si gbadura olorun gba gbogbo ogo mo gbadura gbadura olorun gbo nigbati o di ojo to je wi pe a fe ma lo okan mi fa daru sugbon mi olorun to mi wa wi pe se ti omo iba ya gbe ni bi se ma ma wa igbe ni bi olorun ti se mo gbe oruko oluwaga mo ran ni pelu inu didun mo dele ko si eni to mo kan kan to sele sugbon Nigba ti a je leti omo yi age ise oyen jade e ba mi yin oluwa logo mo dupa lowo olorun olorun ba bi fi e je jesus ti jade